Hey there, Natalie May here. Today I'm going to show you how I created this page for Stencil Girl. This is a mixed media page of my grandmother and my daughter Jessica. My grandmother has now passed away and this layout is all about how we carry her memory in our hearts and that we miss her terribly. So um, sit back and relax and, and have a bit of a look through how I create this page. So I started off giving my page a bit of a coat with gel medium first just to seal it and then um, I'm using 13 Arch Gesso and the, what am I using? The Floral Frolics Pattern Stencil designed by Wendy Brightbill. Now I loved this stencil because it just enabled me to create a really cool background pattern and something that I wanted to add a little colour in and around later on. And I'm using this thick heavy gesso by 13 Arts because it has a lot of body and it holds its shape really, really well. So you have to excuse the colouring of my video. Unfortunately, I'm having some lighting issues with my new setup, but you'll get the picture. So I'm using some beautiful papers that I found in my stash. They're also from 13 Arts and they are beautiful colour tones, simple patterns and quite a nice beautiful floral design. So I cut up a few little bits and pieces just to start planning out my page. When I'm um, doing mixed media layouts, I tend to not use a trimmer as much. I find that it's a little bit too perfect if I use a trimmer and nothing about this that I'm doing at the moment is perfect. So um, scissors are fine. So then I use um, what I actually thought was gel medium to adhere it all to my page. Uh, then I have a bit of a moment later on when re on I realize I've just used clear gesso to stick it all down. Um, total total blonde moment but in saying that it works it's stuck it's fine and I do go back and add a little bit of glue um, so I'm just gonna lay it all in and lay it all around get it all set up ready to go to start then sticking down my other elements beautiful okay so I'm using a little bit of chipboard um, the chipboard has already been uh, sealed with a little bit of gesso and I'm going to stick those down so the chipboard I'm using is from Imaginarium Designs, um, great little Australian company. <sighs> Fluffing around, stick it, just stick it. There you go. Beautiful, that'll do. Look at that, perfect. And sticking it down with <laughs> clear gesso. Totally kicked myself when I realized I'd done that. Okay. And stapling it on just for good measure, which is a really good thing at this point since um, the gesso will hold it down to the page, but it is not the best option. Oh, and that's the point that I realise it's clear gesso, not gel medium. So, in with the glue. So, I pop a little bit of glue under just to make sure that I'm all stuck down really, really nicely. Does anybody else have days like that when you can't work out what on earth you're doing or is it just me? Anyway, what am I doing next? Okay, out with the gesso again. So what I'm wanting to do is I want to seal the papers because I'm going to be using watercolours on my background to enhance the papers and build colours up on the background. I've decided to use gesso to build in some big elements in and around my chipboard and to seal my paper. At this point you'll notice that um, there's that little grid there. The That's from the uh, Stencil Club May 2016 stencil from Terry Stegmiller. Now I decided to use that with a bit of gesso but I don't quite know why I didn't film it. And now I'm going over the top with the Peony Blooms by Wendy Brightbill. Um, it's all about creating these beautiful, beautiful layers in the background. So I'm using black archival ink with the peony blooms so that it's permanent when I go and add the color in a moment. 
So I'm just using a little sponge blender to get that on so that it gets on there nice and smooth. So I'm starting to build these beautiful layers in my background, all of these beautiful florals. Now we have got a, <coughs> excuse me, now we've got a beautiful stamp from 13 Arts just to add a little bit more texture. It's all going to slip into the background and to be perfectly honest, you don't actually see a whole lot of it once I get the photo on and get the colour on. But it's about, like I said, creating some of these elements in the background just so that you can build it up. So I'm wanting to stick some microbeads and some little balls and some texture onto my page. So I'm using gel medium. Now this is actually gel medium this time. And I'm getting those on with my little spoon. So just swiping the gel medium on and then getting my seed beads and the little balls and little micro, what are they called? Microspheres and getting them onto my page. So sprinkling, sprinkling them onto the wet, wet bits and then allowing them to dry. I do hit them with the heat gun to help dry off that process. And making sure that they are all stuck down really, really well. What I also like to do is use a little glossy accents or dimensional magic just to pour over the top to make sure that they're really, really stuck down. I have a lovely little stash of metal embellishments, so I dragged some of those out of the archives and used some glue to slide those in under my pattern papers. Um, I swear I must have been having one of those days when I created this page because at this point I don't even realise that my page is upside down. Um, anyone would think that I've never done this before. God, oh my gosh. Anyway, so I slide all of these little metal elements in and make sure that they're all stuck in under there really, really good. And this is all about the texture that we put onto the page before we start building the layers. So now that that is all down, what has to happen is that we need to, oh, there we go, flip it. We need to completely cover it with gesso. Because we're gonna be adding colour with watercolours, the gesso is going to make it all a similar sort of surface so that the colour stays on it the, the same and we end up with the same shades, the same blends and making it all work in together. So I just use a bit more gesso to lightly get in there, tone it all and drying it all off as I go. So. Am I nearly done? Drying, drying. It did take a little bit of drying um, and then it has to be 100% dry before we use anything else after that. So I'm using the 13 Arts watercolours. These are currently my favourite watercolours. They're extremely high quality and at a really, really good price point as well. And they're all hand packaged. But I'm only using, say, four colours out of this selection. So. The entire project is nothing more than layering. Layering up the colours, adding water, spreading it out a bit, but letting the colour pool in and around my mixed media elements. Now what's actually happening in the background is all of that beautiful stenciling that I did earlier, all of that has created these, these little lumps and bumps with the gesso, but the watercolour is actually going to pool in and around that. So there's lots of colour going on, lots of water. As you can see, now that big black gooby bit in the middle there, that is because I'm testing out the colour. I know that's exactly where I'm going to sit my photo, so it doesn't matter if I do a big bit in the middle there because I'm going to cover it up with my photograph. So I move all around the page with my paintbrush and add the colour, building it up, lots of layers, taking a little bit of excess water off where I need to, but building up all of that beautiful colour. Now I've decided that I want to stick on a, a little bit more um, with my stencil. So again, I'm using that um, the mesh stencil from the Mary Mary Quite Contrary Stencil Club May 2016 kit um, and using a little bit of paint to go around my page. 
a little bit more in the way of textural elements with some cotton and using just some glossy accents to stick that down. So just to give the page a little bit more texture to it. So mixed media is all about texture. It's all about layers. It's all about the bits that you want to touch and feel. But on the other hand, it's not too bulky either. So it's definitely going to still fit into a sleeve to go into my albums eventually anyway. So you can see at this point where I have worked all the way around my page, enhancing all of that beautiful stenciling, creating some lovely, lovely puddles of colour and making it all work in with the background. Okay. Um, adding a little bit of red. At this point I kind of realised that it could have added a bit more pop of colour. So I went back over with the red watercolour just to make sure that I gave it that little bit of pop and um, just sprinkled a little bit of it around the page. It's kind of looking pretty cool. I especially love that, that bottom left hand bit on the page where you can see the stencilings come up gorgeous. A few splatters of white splash ink. I do love using this. And again, it gives it a, a final little layer. Um, I couldn't find a paintbrush, so you'll notice I'm using a cable tie to do my splattering. Just going with whatever works. Enhancing some of those leaves and blending them in a little. And last but not least, I wanted to create a bit of a title about how I we carry her in our hearts. So I'm using the 13 Art Splash Ink and just wiping it straight onto the, onto the top of the wood veneers, um, allowing them to dry and then sticking them down. And then I also add a little bit of journaling direct to my page as well. And there's also some on, also some on the back. Now I have used the floral, Floral Frolics Pattern Stencil by Wendy Brightbill, Peony Blooms also by Wendy Brightbill, and the Stencil Club May 2016 Stencil, uh, the 4x4 out of that kit, designed by Terry Stegmiller. So thanks for watching and listening to me ramble, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.